Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. What's uh, what's going on with J.K. Dobbins' knee? It's purely a professional uh, curiosity. It's 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 thinking about player safety. Uh, you know, I really want to make sure that we we consider how players rehab and recover, and it, it's a good opportunity to share some knowledge and, and do a bit of knowledge translation with you. Okay, fine, I want to know because I drafted J.K. Dobbins in my fantasy league and my running back position is looking a little thin. So uh, yeah, you got me, you got me. There will be more to today's video than me just whining about my imaginary team of football players. We will be discussing what Dobbins' initial injury was, what the surgery and rehab looks like, as well as why it's kept him out as long as it has. J.K. Dobbins, running back for the Baltimore Ravens, has been out since the preseason in 2021 after he injured his ACL and had to have season-ending surgery. Despite this, there was a lot of optimism that he would be able to return and be fully ready to go for the start of the 2022 NFL season. Well, about, about that. Throughout this past offseason in the NFL, things started to get a little bit shaky about what his return was going to be like. There started to be a bit more rumors circulating that he wouldn't be fully ready to go to start off the season. This was pretty surprising because most people around the sporting world know that ACL recovery takes around nine months to finish up. This means that if we had something at the start of one season, nine months is going to exist within that 12 months following, you should be totally good to go to start the next season. Recently, J.K. Dobbins opened up a bit more about his knee injury from the preseason of last year. He not only tore his ACL, he also tore his LCL or lateral collateral ligament, tore his meniscus in that knee, and also damaged his hamstring tendon. Yeah, this is about as good as it sounds. Tearing your ACL is obviously bad, but as soon as we start adding other structures, it definitely gets worse because the surgery gets more complicated. Adding an LCL tear or the ligament on the side of the knee to damage to the ACL ligament in the center of the knee, as well as the meniscus or shock absorber, is a really unfortunate situation when it comes to recovery. Meniscus repairs that happen in surgery definitely change the process of what happens after surgery. Sometimes after a meniscus tear that has been repaired, patients might not even be allowed to bend their knee past 90 degrees for the first month and a half or four to six weeks. This can definitely slow things down to start, but can have impacts further down the line in rehab as well when players are trying to get back to full participation. The meniscus is a really important shock absorber in the middle of the knee between the bone of the thigh and the bone of the shin. When we have an activity that's going to be putting a lot of stress through this joint, like running in the NFL, this shock absorption is obviously going to be really, really important. Delaying this ability to really put force through the knee or hindering this process in any way is obviously going to affect athletes' return to play because they aren't able to put the same stress through the knee as they would have been if it was just an ACL tear on its own. Overall, without getting too much in the specific details of surgery, the picture that I'm trying to outline is that Dobbins underwent a very complicated surgical procedure for his knee, worse than just an ACL tear, that has made his recovery process a lot more complicated and lengthy than it otherwise may have been. As of me shooting this video today on September 21st, he is considered week to week, but he got a full practice in today, which is a great sign for him being back on the field very soon. I think that a large part of what's been making it so hard for Dobbins to get back on the field is the position that he plays. As a running back in the NFL, you're asking about as much of your knee as any athlete out there. Between all the cuts, sprinting, as well as just straight impact from hits, there is so much strain placed on the knees of NFL running backs. And this is where team decision making between the team, the organization, and the athlete becomes really, really important. Both the athlete and the team have to be pretty much 100% confident in this case that number one, we're not going to have a massive risk of re-injury beyond the inherent risks of the NFL, and two, ensure that Dobbins is ready to perform at the NFL level. Putting him back in even just a week too early and risking something happening to that knee and setting the rehab process back further is just not worth it when this recovery has been as long as it has up to this point. Overall, I don't think the delayed recovery process is a, a bad omen, a sign of bad strengthening, poor rehab, or anything like that. I think it was just a very complicated surgical procedure and recovery afterwards 
just based on the nature of the injury. If anything, it actually makes me sort of optimistic that the team has held him out as much as they have because it shows how much they value him as a player that they don't want to risk re-aggravation because ideally you want to have a player like this available down the stretch this season and well into the future. I mean, obviously it's not amazing. From the rehab side, we'd love to have players get back as quickly and safely as possible, but taking a little bit more time like it has is not inherently bad. It just likely shows the team is being cautious. But tell that to my fantasy football league where I took Henry in the first round and things are looking pretty bleak right now. I'd love to have some JK Dobbins out there on the field. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support and I hope you learned something new today. Injuries in the NFL are very interesting to me as a huge football fan as well as physiotherapist, so if you have any injury questions, drop them in the comments section below or ask me about specific cases. I may make a video specific to a player that you request. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting that thumbs up button down below or subscribing to the channel. Both help my channel reach more interested viewers like yourself, and subscribing gives you notifications when I release more videos just like this one. But most importantly though guys, as always, Move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.